creative living. Utilizing today's technology with the best of the past to bring you innovative ideas and up-to-date information for creative lifestyles in today's active world. With your host, Cheryl Borden. Welcome to Creative Living today. We're going to learn how to use some inks in crafting. We'll talk about losing weight and feeling better and discuss the growing of pumpkins and gourds. One of my guests today is Marissa Puelco, and she's a designer and event planner who lives in San Miguel de Allende, Mexico. Marissa will give a rundown on what vertigo is and explain how the optical effects are achieved. She'll show samples of what it can be used for and show how to create custom designs with both vertigo and Sukunico inks. Her business is Modern Surrealist. Another guest is Pat Baird, and she's a registered dietitian. And Pat says that people always ask her how they can feel better and lose weight. They're often surprised by her answer. She'll discuss her four top tips, and she says that real weight loss comes from a real plan. Pat lives in Greenwich, Connecticut. And we'll begin the show with my good friend, Kurt Janes, who owns and operates Garden Source Nursery and Landscaping in Portales, New Mexico. And Kurt's going to talk about how to grow pumpkins and gourds and share some usage tips as well. We'll also learn how to identify the various products. Kurt, it's really nice to have you here. And every year when it gets holiday or fall time, I just love to decorate the, the front porch with uh, oh, the little gourds and some pumpkins and things but I've never grown them myself. So you're going to tell us how easy they are to grow, aren't you? Yes, we are, Cheryl. Uh, they are actually uh, easy to grow, and uh, anybody can do it if they just have enough space. Oh, a lot of space. That's <laughs> right. Well, since I don't know the difference in most of these, let's start with this one, which looks like your, well, I guess this one looks like the, the jack-o'-lantern, but this one would make a great uh, jack-o'-lantern. Yes, it would. That, uh, Cheryl, that one is called the um, Cinderella pumpkin. Oh, and if you okay. look at it, it kind of uh -huh. looks like Cinderella's cage. carriage. Carriage. Uh -huh. Yes, and it's also known as a stacking pumpkin because you see how flat it is. Mm -hmm. You can stack those probably two or three high to make your display on your front porch or you know for mm -hmm. an autumn display of any sort. Yeah, it is flat. And uh, that one will not make as good a carving pumpkin as your standard variety, so it's more for display. Display. Okay. Now this one is kind of warty looking. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, and you're, looking. that's a perfect uh, way to describe it because it's a red warty. Oh, it w -H -O is. W H O. R-T-Y is the Wordy. name of that pumpkin. And uh, that one would be easy to carve. Mm -hmm. Okay. It has all the different lines and textures mm -hmm. on it. It makes it really interesting. Very interesting. You could probably take and stack it on top of one of the Cinderella's oh, you if you uh -huh. really wanted to. And then go uh -huh. yes. different sizes. Now this looks like the jack-o'-lantern one, doesn't the, it? It is. That's the standard uh, variety that you can find at any store or, uh -huh. or farmer's market that you go out and look uh, for. And that one is known as the Howden, H-O-W-D-E-N. Oh. That's your standard jack-o'-lantern. Obviously uh -huh. we know they're easy to um, mm -hmm. Uh, to carve, carve. Uh -huh. and also to make pies and such oh, like yeah. that. Oh uh yeah, -huh. and the seeds and things that are in them, that, that's fun to use put pretty those much in every the bit oven. of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now the white one is is my favorite. It's just beautiful. Well, it, it is, and it's different and unique, just like uh -huh. some of the other ones that you can find out there also. And that one is known as the white ghost. Uh huh. And uh, I'll tell you, if you went to carve that, you would almost need an axe to get into it because oh. it has very hard flesh on it. So it's not a carving pumpkin. However, it make excellent pies. Now, I'll tell you, it has a yellow flesh inside, whereas oh, these others does. have orange. Uh huh. So it, it is still the, the flesh and seeds would be edible. Correct. It's just that it's a very thick um, skin. Skinned, mm -hmm. Very thick skin. Oh, so okay. I don't think I'd uh, let any of the kids try to try carve, carve that it. one. No, just stick with the standard tough. variety. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if those are just called ornamental gourds or is that? I have looked high and low to try to find the names of each of these. And then when you go to buy these at a market, uh, you'll notice that there's so many different varieties. Mm -hmm. These are just known as ornamental gourds. Okay. So you just, in, in most cases, just pick out your favorites whenever you are. So are gourds just ornamental. baby pumpkins or is it a totally different type? They're, they're of the same family. And okay. uh, they're just a different type, yes. Okay. They'll have the okay. seeds in them just like uh -huh. this. Obviously, the seeds will be small. A and you can eat the, the flesh inside? Yes, or? you can, and most of them. Okay. Most cases, Good. yes. Because well, they're related like to the butternut squash and your acorn mm -hmm. squash and those type of things. Well, we were talking earlier about how hard it is to grow. You've got a great story about how most of these were grown. Well, these three right here, Cheryl, I uh, actually had bought them at a, uh, a market last year. And after the season, I put them in my... Uh, garden so I could compost them for mm -hmm. next year and lo and behold this spring they came up and I had <laughs> multiple vines and I just let them go not knowing what to expect and this is what I came uh -huh. up with. So that's there it you shows didn't you show any easy. tender loving care to them at all. <laughs> I didn't they just sat on top of the ground and, and uh, decomposed and <laughs> up came the seeds. 
But um, the pumpkins are easy to grow. You do need a lot of space, space. for them because mm -hmm. they are a vine. The the Actually, I'm going to tell you this because I went through this this year. They are susceptible to some diseases that can uh, limit the amount of uh, pumpkins that you, your vine will yield. Uh, one thing is the powdery mildew. Pretty much every time you plant a pumpkin, you're going to have powdery mildew. Once you have it, it is hard to get rid of. So how you do that whenever you're so growing So you want it, to prevent it? You want to prevent it. dealing with it. Exactly. Okay. That is correct. And uh, I, I use this product here called Natural Guard. It is a... Uh, says it's organic. A, oh, soap. Uh -huh. it's liquid, a liquid fungicide. Lins, uh -huh. uh, fungicide, and you can also get them that come with the insecticides also. So that way you can get okay. rid of bugs such as squash bugs, cucumber beetles, things like that. Will attack your vines. When do you put this out? You would need to do that about the 1st of June. And it depends on what uh, part of the country and what zone you're in, but around the 1st of June is when you should start being preventative. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then always watch them for uh, bugs. Now, and do you want to kind of tilt them off the vine so you can see? Is that where the, the fungus or the bugs would be? The uh, bugs will be underneath the leaves. The oh, fungus the will leaves. be on the leaves. The powdery mildew, which is your most common uh, fungus that gets on the leaves, is a, it looks like you've dusted it with flour. Oh, okay. So you want to you prevent want to watch that because it mm -hmm. will wither the plant and it will die. Mm -hmm. And obviously they don't take a lot of rain, uh, water, because we haven't had much rain. <laughs> well, I have a drip system in my garden, and that's actually a good point there because oh. on, to help minimize the uh, effects of powdery mildew and uh, viruses and things like that on your plants, it would be best if you could drip irrigate them or water them on the ground, not with a sprinkler not a spraying sprinkler. on top. Uh -huh. That's very important. A drip uh, will definitely help. Mm -hmm. Fertilizer is very important also because if you are trying to grow the biggest pumpkin on the block, you'll want yeah. to make sure that you are fertilizing them probably every two weeks to once a month at least. Every two weeks to once a month. That's quite a lot. It is. Uh, but, you know, so a lot of times we grow these pumpkins just for the fact that when everything else is starting to wane in the fall, uh -huh. you have your pumpkins to display. Planting time is also important. You know, there's uh, many competitions where they grow the largest mm -hmm. pumpkins, and to get those up and growing, you would want to start those anywhere from April 25th to May 15th so that you could have them get that large for, and get for competition. get mature and, and be ready to, That's to correct. take off the And vine. those are called your giant pumpkins. And on, are pumpkins like cantaloupes in that on a vine you'll have four or five, like when you grow cantaloupes? That is correct, and you'll know you have a female flower with it, the, when the bloom opens underneath it will be a little, almost the size of a marble. Oh, okay. And then the male uh, bloom will not. So the bees then come in and pollinate them and uh -huh. that's how they uh, will um, grow a pumpkin. Well, it's kind of nice to know how you grew yours because we that gives all of us hope. That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Well, it's really interesting and, and they're more fun to decorate with than anything else and to set out at Halloween and to right. let your kids help carve. But um, it, I really didn't realize it was so much to know about a pumpkin. Well, uh, there's a lot to know about them. And, and if you just stay on top of making sure that you don't get any diseases off the bat, I think you're going to have good luck. And plus, it's excellent uh, to grow those with your children. Oh, yeah. Your grandchildren. Well, well, thank you very much, Kurt. You're very this welcome. Is interesting. Pat, thank you so much for coming. I know you're a registered dietitian, and I bet you get lots of questions about how can I lose weight and feel better? All the time. <laughs> All, that's like the lead question. Um, I think what everybody is looking for is like the magic The food, quick fix. The quick fix, the magic bullet, and mm -hmm. it's really all about lifestyle. It's, look, at the end of the day, if somebody really wants to lose weight, it's about calories in versus calories out. A calorie mm -hmm. is a calorie is a calorie, I always tell my students. Uh -huh. um, but it's really about, to me, four important lifestyle. Mm, just four. Four. <laughs> yeah, really, it's easy. At the top of the list, because nutrition has such an impact on health, mm -hmm. um, we really have to talk about smoking, mm -hmm. okay? Every health professional on the planet will agree. Stop smoking. There's 20% of the population that are still smoking. Uh -huh. We have to stop it. Obviously, you know, the lung problems are one thing. What makes smoking so devastating is that it raises the level of inflammation in the body. Mm -hmm. Inflammation damages arteries 
and that builds up the likelihood for heart disease and stroke. Oh, and I think most of us always thought it only affected our lungs. Absolutely. We didn't think about the heart it, issue. It, we really have to be careful and because heart disease and nutrition and diet are so closely tied, you've got to get that inflammation mm -hmm. down. You need to take care of your arteries, then look at taking care of your weight and your mm -hmm. diet. Evidently, it's extremely difficult for people to quit. It is, and I'm not trying to imply that uh, it's easy, but there's smoking cessation programs, there's gum and other aids mm -hmm. to help people stop smoking. So the first step is to decide you want to do that. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. and just because it also impacts other people. The effects of third hand, second hand smoke rather, mm -hmm. have been documented. So we just need to stop. Mm -hmm. Strangely enough, sleep is like second to the top of I the didn't list. Realize that. You know what? Sleep has such an impact on focus and concentration, on weight. We know that people who are sleep deprived have higher rates of obesity, heart disease, mm -hmm. diabetes, strokes, and they also have more accidents, whether mm. it's physical accidents walking down the street or driving. The National Institutes of Health actually recommend seven to nine hours of sleep for people. This is kind of a strange- Adults and children? 10 to 12 for children, oh, okay. seven to nine. Below seven hours a night is actually defined as sleep deprivation. And you can't ever catch up. I mean, you can't store it Not and then really. get five hours one night and 12 one night. No, mm -hmm. so it has to be consistent. This is a strange sign, this no electronic sign uh -huh. to talk <laughs> about sleep, mm -hmm. is you've got to get them out of the bedroom. Okay, no laptops, no iPads, no cell phones, especially for kids. They mm -hmm. can't be IMing under the sheets. <laughs> yeah. It disrupts sleep mm -hmm. and it also keeps them up till 11, 12, 1 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. It's hard for them to get up. They sure. can't focus in school. So no electronics, make a plan. It's all about making a plan. plan. Mm -hmm. And most of us would love to be able to lose weight now, in a here, snap. Here we go. <laughs> well, if you get sleep, okay, you can focus on planning how you're gonna do that. The oh. first key in losing weight is keeping a food diary. Mm -hmm. You have to know what are you eating mm -hmm. in order to make changes. So here's some high tech ways, okay? Use your cell phone. And, and I had not ever thought of that. I, I know about writing it down, breakfast, lunch, snacks. Yes, uh -huh. and we always used to recommend, you know, carry some index cards, get a little memo book, uh -huh. use the camera on your cell that phone. Is great. Take a picture of everything, and then you'll know what you're eating and you can make some changes. And what size the serving was. We might say one enchilada, for instance, but it might be overstuffed, it might be Absolutely. on the plate with beans and rice, and yes. so it's adding up those calories. There's no question about it. The other thing that we can do on our cell phones, again, and use technology, is to use apps to uh, keep track of calories. After we've watched what we're eating for a few days, mm -hmm. we can even go into a fast food restaurant and go to something like MyFitnessPal and look up fries, a quarter pounder, a mm -hmm. medium Coke, and we can see our calories at the end of the day. We can even figure in activity. There are so many wonderful apps and we have so many kids who are overweight. Yes. Cell phones and technology are a really wonderful way to help them uh -huh. to keep their food diaries online. And other people who don't want to use a phone or an iPad can certainly have that pad around. But you want to watch your portion sizes. You want to be sure that you're well hydrated. So Lots of water. Mm -hmm. Eight to ten glasses a day. And, okay. Uh, we can talk about health. We Without can talk about e losing word. weight. <laughs> the E word of exercise or physical activity. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't mean, you know, running five miles a day. Uh -huh. It means getting a pedometer and walking another 10 minutes a day. It means something like getting a jump, jump rope. rope. 
uh, jumping in the pool. For some people, if they really have a lot of weight to lose, jumping rope is way too high impact. Uh -huh. At least to start with. Absolutely. I think starting s lower and slower is usually a better, but it's just starting, period. Starting is difficult. Uh -huh. And what I really want to emphasize is resistance training. It's this idea of getting something easy, like a pair of resistance bands. Mm -hmm. And these come in all sizes and shapes. Here's what makes resistance training um, so beneficial is it helps to build muscle, mm -hmm. okay? Muscle burns more calories than fat. So it makes us a more efficient machine. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, is that as we get older, we lose muscle. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have hip fractures and people falling because they don't have that stability and those strong muscles to help Support them. us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That certainly makes sense. Well, you've inspired us. Now we've I got so. to make that decision well, to do this. Everybody can do it. Everybody <laughs> can do it. Start slowly and make those changes. Big results. Big results. Well, thank you, Pat. This has very, been very interesting. Good. Marissa, it's always so nice to have you and, and other crafters on the show because you all get to see all the new products and experiment with them and, and see how they work, what doesn't work and all that. How do you keep up with what's coming off? You know, every time I go to a new a show, a craft show, I, I can't believe the things that I see. It's all these great new materials and the material I'm really excited about right now is called Vertigo. Uh huh. And um, I had not seen it, so uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think this is going to be fun to show everybody. I think once you start crafting with Vertigo, you're going to be hooked. It's, hooked. It is so fun, and there's so much you can do with it. Oh, good. And they have such nice names. This one's called Taffeta. Yeah, it comes in several different patterns, and it's, it's polycarbonate, which is a type of plastic, but it can be uh -huh. used for all these different crafts, and I'm going to show you today how to ink on it and create some really cool effects. Breeze. Breeze. And it kind of looks like wind blowing through the clouds. Mm -hmm. Prism. Prism. I love that. that I do too. That looks like a, a looks, prism design. Looks like, like bubble wrap. Kaleidoscope. Yeah, or like <laughs> yeah. fly eyes. Pebbles. That one's very, you know, like watery looking. Uh-huh. This is kind of an angle. It's called tilted. Tilted, yeah. yeah the angled angle. stripes. Uh-huh. And rattlesnake. Yeah, that's one of my favorites. Uh -huh. It looks like dragon skin. <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay, so, so we're go you're going to show us because this may be a totally new product for most of us and we don't even know how to it's work a, with it. It's a whole new craft. It's The way it works is there's thousands of tiny little lenses molded into both sides of the material and it causes light reflection and refraction to make all these really neat effects. Uh -huh. And if you would like, you can choose one of those patterns, whichever one you like. The rattlesnake is. I think I'll yeah. choose the rattlesnake. Good choice. Good I choice. like the rattlesnake. Good. And so it's really fun to use with these different inks. These are Sukineko inks from mm -hmm. Japan, and you can just. Now, and um, these are called. What kind of inks are these? This is Stazon. So stays it's, on, it's great it's for all different solvent. crafts. Yeah, uh -huh. it's a solvent ink, and you can use it on any. Um, non-porous surface. So mm -hmm. I'm going to flip this over to the back. And is the it? The back is just slightly less um, shiny. Okay. And then you can just drip. Oh, from up above. Yeah. Uh -huh. You can drip colors. And there's a lot of different things you can do. See how it's just spreading out like uh -huh. that? And then you can even, oh. I like to, and you could just do dripping effect and let it dry. Or you could do some blending, which I really like to do, which is mm -hmm. really oh, fun. These uh -huh. are cute, aren't they? Little cute? dauber things. Dauber things. Uh -huh. Yeah, little <laughs> daubers. And you just use them to blend the colors. You know. Well, is this the same type of ink that's in a ink pad? Yeah, and different? these are actually uh -huh. refill bottles that you can use oh. to refill your ink, um, oh, okay. ink pads. Oh, okay. Then so, I kind of am familiar with those. Yeah, and but you know, lately I've just been having fun experimenting with all these different ways of using inks and vertigo together, and it's just that's great kind fun. Of a gold, yeah, isn't it? Uh huh. It's just beautiful, and then 
the daubers, you know, they come in different sizes. This is a oh. bigger dauber. We can, and you could dab it like that, uh -huh. or you can pull it around and kind spread it. And uh -huh. just check out all the different effects you get, blending colors. And mm -hmm. yeah. now that is the back. So then, when I flip it over, oh. you'll you'll see the effect. Oh, and you can really see the pattern in it once yeah, it's colored. Yeah, it really brings That's out pretty. the pattern. And it um, dries really fast, I guess, too, since it's ink. It dries pretty uh -huh. fast, and you can uh, hit it with a little heat gun uh, lightly if you want to uh -huh. speed up the drying process. Another great thing about Vertigo is you can use it with your die cutters and uh -huh. your embossing folders. So here's some that I have uh, already embossed. Uh -huh. I ran it through my embossing machine. And I can then just take hard to see, but yeah. one of my ink pads. Well, it's going to show up better when I, uh -huh. when I do this. And I guess you get used to the feel so that you yeah. know front, the front. Oh, that is see, pretty. It's starting it? to pop. Now you can see where I uh -huh. did the um, embossing. embossing. Uh -huh. So I just, I just did that. And one just quickly. our regular embossing. Mm -hmm. uh, just the embossing folders. folders. There's, there's uh -huh. Different ones you can use. And so I want to show you a fun little project. I made some bookmarks. And these are really pretty. And this is both the, the long part and the flower are yeah. all out of the same Yeah, so I just took vertigo. a sheet of vertigo. And for the bookmark, I used my paper trimmer to uh, cut a piece that mm -hmm. was about, um, well, I can do one right here. I can just cut it about an inch and a quarter mm -hmm. wide, about like that. And mm -hmm. then the rest of it, I, I went ahead and pre-inked these just to uh -huh. give so them time to, so they'd be dry. And I'm going to run it through the embosser real quick. We'll do a pink flower because okay. I don't know if you That's noticed, pretty. but pink is my favorite I color. I think it is. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I'll just pop this right out. And so then these flowers just pop mm. right out. Like now, if, if people have those uh, computerized cutters, can you run this mm -hmm. through there too? These oh, do great. work with the electronic cutters yeah, the electronic too. Uh -huh. I tend to lean more towards the low tech, but you know me, I'm kind of into low tech stuff and high tech. Oh, and so, well, I was going to say, you <laughs> always have lots of new things to show. <laughs> I like new stuff, but when it comes to um, cutters, I enjoy the hands on feeling. Uh -huh. And so, as you can see, I am just, you know, coloring the ends of those uh -huh. just to kind of give them a little more dimension. And I can I can take my dauber and I could use, you know, I'll go back to this pink again and get a little bit more like that. And I can do that one. And you can kind of it's pretty uh -huh. just accent. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty fun. It's, there's so much you can do with this. Uh -huh. Probably most of it, if we've seen it in the store, we didn't know what to do with it, so we just didn't buy it. Yeah, well, now you it's know. It's hard to know. Yeah, mm -hmm. now you know. And, and once you start doing stuff with it, you get so inspired, you, you want to do everything. Mm -hmm. you, look at that. That's really pretty. Look at that. Beautiful. And then I'll just... And I've noticed the there are so many wonderful videos on the internet. So mm -hmm. if you buy, have a new cutter or if you want to try a new product, you can just watch some videos oh, yeah. from people like you that have demonstrated how to do it. Oh, for sure. There, there's so much inspiration and, you know, I love playing around with all mm. these fun new materials. So for this one, then I'm just going to punch a brad right through there. It's mm -hmm. got these holes already. It's oh, part I of thought the design. it was glued on, but it's put on with a brad. I put see. it on with a brad, uh -huh. and, and then I just punched a hole in a, in a piece of vertigo that uh -huh. was uh, rectangular, but I was thinking later I realized I could just use one of these pin backs oh. uh -huh. and, you know, open it up and then and have wear a it on a pin. Yes, that would be so pretty. <laughs> Well, this has really been fun to learn how to, to use some new products and new ways to you to work with them. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Marissa. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed the show today. Next time on Creative Living, we'll learn how to prepare figs, learn to do pillow magic, and show how to make candy pinwheels. One of my next guests is a chef and culinary consultant to the California Fig Advisory Board. He's going to talk about and demonstrate how to prepare savory and flavorful California figs. Another guest will demonstrate some unique no-sew pillows made from foam and paint rollers, decorated with applique and other embellishments. And finally, we'll learn some new ways to use basic candy melts. My guest will demonstrate how to make candy pinwheels that will be a big hit at any occasion, especially a child's birthday party. All of these topics will be featured on the next Creative Living Show.
If you ever have comments or suggestions or ideas for shows, you can email me at cheryl.borden at enmu.edu. I'd also like to ask you to become a fan of Creative Living on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com and in the search window type in Creative Living with Cheryl Borden. Thanks so much. I hope you'll plan to join me next time for Creative Living. We are very pleased to offer you a new booklet that accompanies this series of Creative Living. This booklet is titled the 6900 series and it features a wonderful collection of ideas and information and it's available free of charge on our website. Posted as a PDF file, you can simply download the entire booklet or just the segments you're most interested in. For your copy of this new booklet, go to our website at kenw.org and then click on Creative Living. Scroll down to the booklet section and you can click on this booklet or on any of the other booklets that we have available online. We also would like to invite you to sign up for our free e-newsletter. Just go to kenw.org and click on the sign up now button. Thank you.